Hello my friends! I wanted to make another video because of uh, this new Bill Nye interview. Yes, yes, he mentioned us again, so let's give him some response. Or should we call him William Sanford Nye? He claims he is a scientist, but if you take a closer look at his past you will see that he has been an actor most of his life. That's why he doesn't use his real name like a real scientist would do. First let's watch uh, the clip and then I will analyze his words. I think there is still this lingering misconception that studying outer space is kind of this singular thing, um, when in reality, as you mentioned, solving for space solves for Earth. Studying the universe helps us infinitely understand our lives here on our own planet. Um, I'm curious that it's such a simple concept, but it seems tricky to ingrain in, in a new generation. And through well, this initiative, through all the things you're doing, how? <laughs> so here's, well, speaking of how, there are people running around in the United States, or well, in the world, on the electric internet, thinking out loud, or whatever the expression is, that the earth might be flat. <sighs> It's a, what? It's the 21st century. So s space exploration or planetary science is more important than ever. Just that, that anybody would even joke about it is weird. And so uh, this anti-science movement that we have in the United States right well, in the, in the Western world right now is, is bad for everybody. And so the more we explore outer space, the more we learn about ourselves. Now, talking practically, all these hurricanes that are coming ashore in the southern states, we know where they are and where they're coming from and give them names because of space assets, because we have space assets, because we have satellites and cameras and image processing systems and the extraordinary computer models that enable us to predict their past based on uh, barometric pressure readings. I mean, it's amazing. And this is all science and it's all space science. Furthermore, I talk all the time, my grandparents really didn't have any understanding of relativity, especially when they were little kids, it hadn't even been discovered yet. And they saw the development of nuclear weapons, the discovery of the neutron, mm -hmm. development of nuclear weapons, and then this idea to use nuclear energy to make heat and electricity. Well, now, astronomers, astrophysicists, cosmologists are learning that we don't know about 95% of the, maybe it's 94, maybe it's 96% of the universe. We don't know what it is. It's dark matter in lumps in the cosmos, driven around by dark energy out there somewhere. Well, in the next 30 years, who knows what discoveries will be made that will be as profound as relativity. Just, you guys, your, your mobile phone depends on both special and general relativity to get the right answer, to get it to work. And so we take all that for granted, but it's, it's the exploration of space that led to these profound, uh, profound improvements or uh, quality of life for all, so many of us. And when it comes to 4-H and agriculture, agriculture, as I mentioned, depends on all of this technology. Depends on all of this. But today's, day, by the way, the first day of fall, first day of autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. Woo! <laughs> uh, we compute that or assign that based on observation of distant stars to find the Earth's place in its orbit. So we all take it for, we all go to Staples or wherever it is and buy calendars and we all take it for granted, but it's all a result of space exploration. Did you understand anything of what he just said? Let me restart the video and tell you what I think about it. <laughs> there are people running around in the United States or well, in the world on the electric internet thinking out loud or whatever the expression is that the earth might be flat. Yeah, how in the world is this possible? Free speech should be banned and these people should be censored. Oh wait, they are already trying to do that. They censor Flat Earth because they worry that we will convert more people. 
because we speak truth and they give us lies and deception. They know the truth will win, that's why they need to censor it and ridicule it. That's exactly what they are doing in this video, with this actor saying his scripted words. And look at the girl's reaction, clearly she is not a flat earther. She even made a beautiful picture of a red planet that matches with her shirt. Planets are round, you know. That's how you know that the earth is a ball. If you want to know the shape of the thing under your feet, you need to look up at the sky. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's a, what? It's the 21st century. So s space exploration or planetary science is more important than ever. Just that, that anybody would even joke about it is weird. Yes, yes, but it's not a joke, my friend, the actor. And you know that. If it was just a joke, you would think it's funny and not worry about it. But then you have all these flat earthers coming up with those photos showing skylines from insane distances, pointing out with their flawed math calculations that it's impossible on a ball. Yes, because that's what they will say. If you give them photos and calculations, they will say the maths are wrong, or the picture is photoshopped, or whatever reason that will discredit this evidence. And so... Uh this anti-science movement that we have in the United States right well, in the Western world right now is, is bad for everybody. And so the more we explore outer space, the more we learn about ourselves. Now, um, uh, wait a second. We are not an anti-science movement. We are truthers and we love science. We just have a different understanding of the word science. Because we like to use a scientific method to come to conclusions. We are the ones that did all the experiments in the last few years. Hundreds or even thousands of silly flat earthers going out there doing all kinds of experiments. The claims you make are based on assumptions and beliefs. Where is your scientific experiment that proves the distance to the sun or uh, the size of the earth? Where is your proof of gravity even? How come it's so difficult to silence those flat earthers? One good piece of evidence is enough, you know. And why do you say space research is the most important thing in our century? Uh, the world is in a lockdown, did you hear it? Do you think space exploration is gonna save us from the deadly virus? Is that why you think space exploration is so important? Or maybe do you have close contacts with the aliens that will come to save us? Is that it? Uh, I don't know, man. Let's continue watching this uh, BS. Talking practically, all these hurricanes that are coming ashore in the southern states, uh, we know where they are and where they're coming from and give them names because of space assets, because we have space assets, because we have satellites and cameras and image processing systems. We never said you don't have satellites and cameras. How does it prove the Earth is a ball? Did you finally launch a satellite that can do live video from space, showing us this fantasy ball spinning in real time? Oh no, you are still using your image processing systems. A computer needs to generate a picture because... Uh, because... Uh, just because computers are smart, they make better pictures, I guess. You're not gonna use a real camera in space. <laughs> Those things don't work in space, man. It's so advanced. Uh, only the Chinese people, they can do HD cameras on the moon. Uh, yeah. And the extraordinary computer models that enable us to predict their past based on uh, barometric pressure readings. I mean, it's amazing. And this is all science and it's all space science. Furthermore, I talk all the time, my grandparents really didn't have any understanding of relativity, especially when they were little kids, it hadn't even been discovered yet. And they saw the development of nuclear weapons, the discovery of the neutron, mm -hmm. development of nuclear weapons, and then this idea to use nuclear energy to make heat and electricity. My grandparents also didn't have any idea about relativity. Same for my parents and same for myself. You would think we understand it by now or that's what he is trying to tell us, but at the same time they give us things like this. 
Einstein's description of gravity just got much harder to beat. Arizona researchers put general relativity to a new test with black hole images. How do you want us to understand this stuff? You keep making up more theories all the time. And why do you start to talk about nukes? Nukes are only possible on a ball earth? Many, 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 many years ago in a silent, peaceful night. NASA nuked the moon! That proves we are on a ball. Well, now, astronomers, astrophysicists, cosmologists, are learning that we don't know about 95% of the, maybe it's 94, maybe it's 96% of the universe. We don't know what it is. It's dark matter in lumps in the cosmos, driven around by dark energy out there or somewhere. Well, in the next 30 years, who knows what discoveries will be made that will be as profound as relativity. Just, you guys, your, your mobile phone depends on both special and general relativity to get the right answer, to get it to work. And so we take all that for granted, but it's, it's the exploration of space that led to these profound, uh, profound improvements or uh, quality of life for all, so many of us. He is right, people. Without space exploration, you would not have a cell phone. Your phone can't work without general relativity. I mean, imagine relativity was wrong. If you would let go of your phone, it would fly off into space. You would have to buy five new phones in a single day, messing up your days and making you a poor, miserable individual. Oh, remember when NASA invented Velcro? Man, it changed the world, I will never forget. All those people that were too dumb to tie their shoelaces, all those people were stuck inside of their home for all their life. I mean, they could go outside, but they fell down all the time or their shoelaces got stuck in their bike and causing all kinds of accidents. Until NASA invented Velcro, now all those people can go outside with their fancy new space shoes. Oh man, or, or when NASA invented the super soaker? Man, it changed my whole life as a kid. Anyway, we did a video about NASA inventions before. If you watch it, you will learn that it was not NASA inventing Velcro. If you look into it, it turns out that they invented almost nothing. And when it comes to 4-H and agriculture, agriculture, as I mentioned, depends on all of this technology. Depends on all of this. But today's, a, by the way, the first day of fall, first day of autumn in the yeah. Northern Hemisphere. Woo! <laughs> exactly. A farmer could never grow anything without space technology. <sighs> come on, man. I don't mind you laugh at flat earthers, but at least come up with some better things to discredit us. You're a big name when it comes to the topic of flat earth. You know why? Because you are the science guy. Give us some of your science and show us the curve. You are just like this other science guy making these ridiculous claims. And I said, hmm. I remember this. That's what I'm saying. I remember this That's tweet. That's what I'm saying. So I'm there and I said, hmm, wait, wait, the angle of this, how long is it? In? So I checked the stadium on its configuration, what's longitude and latitude. And I said, I did a quick calculation and I tweeted, the winning field goal in that game was aided by a one-third of an inch deflection to the right from Earth's rotation. Boom! Flat Earth debunked. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.